What's going on guys? In this video, we're going to get started with Strapi. Strapi is a Node.js headless CMS that will allow us to create our own data structures or data types and then design our API. I'm going to show you a couple of features. For example, with Strapi, we can customize the different API endpoints. We can extend those endpoints. We can also create lifecycle hooks for the model. So those are some of the features that I'm going to show you. Remember to subscribe to the channel and let's get started. Okay, we're going to get started with the Strapi by creating a new project from the CLI. So the first requirement is having Node.js version 12 or above. So node minus B, our version meets the requirements. So now we are going to create a new Strapi project. We can use either Yarn or NPX. I'm going to use NPX. So this is NPX, create Strapi app and the name of the project in this case this will be teams api and here we need to pass this parameter that is quick start this is going to download and install all the dependencies and it's going to create all the project directory structure okay our strapi project is ready so this will automatically open the administration panel that we can access using this URL. So this is the default port 1337. So here we need to create our first user that will be the admin user for the CMS. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to create this new user. And as we can see here, we have some plugins installed by default, such as the content types builder that we're going to use to create our data structures or content types, the media library, where we can upload videos, images, etc. Rules and permissions, where we can set up the authentication and authorization mechanisms for our API. Here we have a marketplace where we can install different plugins. Here we have all the plugins that we have installed and some other settings for the CMS. Okay, now let's go to the content types builder and let's create our first content type. So we have to go here to create new collection type and we're going to call it team. So the first field for our team content type will be the name of the team. So this will be name. I'm going to add another field here. The type will be a string as well. And this will be the location of the team. I'm going to add another field that will be a text as well. And this will be the website of the team. I'm going to click here on finish. So here we have our first content type ready. I'm going to save this. And now we can create teams from here. So we go here to teams and now we can create a new team clicking on add new team. So the first team will be Barcelona. The location will be Spain and the website will be www.barcelona.com. Save this and we have our first team ready. Okay, so and the way to consume this data from the API is by accessing to this URL, localhost 1337 forward slash, and in this case, the resource or the path to the content will be slash teams. So let's go to Postman and let's create our first request to get this data. Okay, so this is the first endpoint to get the list of existing teams. But if we, we execute the request, we're gonna see that we don't have access. So we get a 403. So we need to go back and explicitly allow public access to this endpoint. So let's go back and let's go to roles and permissions. And here we need to go to the public role. And here we need to go to application and we need to specifically select the different endpoints and assign the permissions. So the get teams endpoint is this find operation, as we can see here. And if we select and we click on save, this will allow us to access that endpoint without any authentication. So let's go back to Bosman. Okay, now let's call this endpoint again. And now we are able to get the data. Okay, and the same here. 
This is a special endpoint generated by Strapi, where we get the count of records for this resource. So again, we don't have access, so we're going to need to allow public access to this endpoint. Let's go back and we need to go here to public and we need to allow access to this count endpoint. So I'm going to save this. And if we go back and we run this endpoint again, we get access to this endpoint and we get one because we just created one record here. So if we go back, we're going to see all the different endpoints that are generated automatically by Strapi. We have the find, we have the count, we have the create, we have the find one, we have the delete, and we have the update. All standard operations for a RESTful API. Okay, let's go back. And now I'm going to stop this. Okay, now let's open Visual Studio Code and let's add some custom settings there. So this is Teams API and let's open Visual Studio Code. Okay, when we create our content type, Strapi generates a directory structure here within the API folder that includes the content type name that we created as a folder and multiple files that will allow us to customize the endpoints, the model, and the routes that are part of the API. So if we go to routes, we're going to see that we have all the different endpoints to get the list of themes, to get the count of themes. We just tested these two endpoints. We also have the endpoint to get one specific theme, to create themes, to update themes, and to delete themes. So now we are going to customize our controllers. We are going to customize actually one specific endpoint. So if we go to the documentation, we can see that we have the implementation of the different endpoints to find all the elements, to find one element, to count the elements, etc. So let's customize this find endpoint. So I'm going to grab the code from here. I'm going to paste it here and we can customize the response. So if we go to the response, we're going to see that by default, this endpoint is returning the identifier of the team, the name, the location, the website, and some of the metadata related to the user that created the record, the user that updated the record, and the date when the record was created and updated. So let's customize this response so that we only get these three attributes, the name, the location, and the website. So let's go back and let's make a few changes here. So here, basically what it's doing is finding or searching. It depends on the query that is part of the request. So here there is a condition and based on this condition is going to execute one or the other. And it's interacting with this uh, services endpoint that is part of the Strapi SDK. So in this case, it's using Restaurant as data type. So we need to replace this by team. So we need to do the same here. And here we get the results of these queries in this entities variable. So we are going to map a function and we are going to customize the response. So I'm going to remove everything from here. So, and here I'm going to add the code to customize the response. So here I'm going to return a different data structure and I'm going to extract the different fields from the original record. So this will be name, and I'm going to assign the name of this value. So this is entity.name. I'm going to return the location of the team. So this will be location. And this is entity.location. And the same for the website. So this is website. And this is entity.website. So I'm going to map just these three properties of the team object. So now let's open the terminal and in order to run the Strapi 
administration panel and also the API. I need to run npm run develop. And here we have the two endpoints, localhost 1337 slash admin. This is to access the administration panel and this is the endpoint to access the API. Now let's go to Postman and let's see if we can get just these three attributes of the object. So let's call this endpoint again. And as we can see here, we just get those three properties. Mm -hmm.